in the next exercise, we're going to determine horizontal transformations of an absolute value graph. The function is f of x equals negative, and then inside absolute values, x minus 2, outside of the absolute value, plus 1. This is an absolute value graph that opens with a maximum of 2 comma 1, with the two sides of the absolute value graph going down from that point. So we have other values at 1 comma 0, 3 comma 0, etc. Now in the first graph, we have g of x, and g of x looks like we've taken the graph of f of x and squished it horizontally. That's a very mathematical term, squished it. So that means we've compressed it horizontally. Now we did have a point at 2 comma 1. Now we have a point at 1 half comma 1. So we went from an x value of 2 to an x value of 1 half. Let's just take a look at one other point here. We went from a point of 3 comma 0 to a point that looks like about 0.75 comma 0. So what are we doing to go from 2 to 1 half or from 3 to 0.75? Well, we'd have to divide by 4. 2 divided by 4 would be 1 half. 3 divided by 4 would be 0.75. So the action that we're doing here is to compress horizontally by a factor of 4. Now, if we're compressing horizontally by a factor of 4, that means that g of x is f of, in parentheses, 4x. That's really tricky. So let's go over to Desmos and make sure we've actually done this correctly. We've got the graph of f of x, and now let's add g of x to it. g of x is f of, in parentheses, 4x. And we can see that that does, in fact, give us the correct graph. Now, one thing you might like to do here to experiment is to just make a slider and take a look at the effects. So I'm going to make g of x equals f of, in parentheses, a times x, and add a slider for that a value. We're starting with an a value of 1. And if I start to move the slider to the right, I can see that this graph is compressing as I go to the right, getting skinnier and skinnier horizontally. And if I move the slider to the left, staying above zero for the a values, you can see that the graph is stretching out horizontally. It's getting wider and wider instead. Why don't we have you folks try the second graph? We still have the graph of f of x equals negative absolute value x minus 2, close the absolute value, plus 1. And that gives us an absolute value function with a maximum value at 2, 1, opening down through 3, comma 0, and 1, comma 0. g of x is another absolute value function that's pointing down. Its corner point is at 3, comma 1, and that goes through the points 1.5, comma 0, and 4.5, comma 0. See if you can figure out what transformation happened there. Pause the video and give it a try. All right, we're back. To figure out the transformation in this case, remember that it can't be a simple translation because the graph has gotten wider. So let's examine the x values of f and g and see what happened to go from f to g. That corner point of the absolute value had an x value of 2, and now it has an x value of 3. We had a point on the x-axis of 1 on f of x, and on g of x, that's at 1.5. We had another point at 3, and on g of x, that's at 4.5. So the question is, what did we do to go from 2 to 3, to go from 1 to 1.5, and to go from 3 to 4.5? we would have to multiply by 1.5. So we've stretched the graph horizontally by a factor of 1.5. Now you might think, okay, that means that g of x is going to be f of 1.5x, but remember that horizontal happens a little backwards, right? So uh, we actually need to do the reciprocal of 1.5. 1.5 is the same thing as 3 halves. 
So in this case, we need g of x equals f of 2 thirds x. Like that seems crazy, right? So let's go ahead and go to Desmos and just make sure that we know what we're talking about here. I still have that slider bar in Desmos from the last problem. So I'm going to go ahead and change the a value to b two thirds. I'm going to backspace over the current a value and type in two divided by three. And this a value of two thirds, so f of in parentheses two thirds x, gives us exactly the graph that we have on our notes. Just to show you what happens if I did 1.5 instead, so let's have a equal 1.5. The value of 1.5 actually compresses the graph. Uh, it makes the graph skinnier, not wider. So hopefully you can see from this that it's a little counterintuitive and you're really going to want to check these answers. Don't trust your gut on this. Our last set of examples for this video takes a look at what happens if we replace x with negative x. We're going to start with f of x equals the quantity x plus 2 in parentheses with a square on the outside. This is a parabola that opens up. It has a vertex at negative 2 comma 0 and points at negative 3 1 and negative 1 1. We're going to find g of x equals f of negative x. So we're going to replace x with negative x. That function is going to be open parentheses, negative x plus 2, close the parentheses, squared. We've replaced x with negative x. Let's take a look at that effect in Desmos. I've got my graph of f of x, and now I'm going to add the graph of f of negative x. If I just use the function notation and graph f of negative x, we can see that the effect is to take the current graph we have and reflect it exactly over the y-axis to the other side. For example, a point at negative 4, 4 becomes a point at positive 4, 4, and a point at negative 1, 1 becomes a point at positive 1, 1. Points on the y-axis stay exactly on the y-axis on both graphs, so 0, 4 on both graphs. Just to verify this, I'm going to show you the other graph I had graphed f of negative x. Let me just graph g of x equals open parentheses negative x plus 2 close parentheses squared and you can see that it is the exact same graph. So replacing x with negative x has this effect of a horizontal reflection. Let's go ahead and graph that. Again, we just take every x value and make it the opposite value. So a value at negative 2, 0 becomes a value at 2, 0. A value at negative 1, 1 becomes a value at positive 1, 1. And a value at negative 3, 1 becomes a value at positive 3, 1. The value at 0, 4 stays at 0, 4. Now if we want one more, there was a point at negative 4, 4. It becomes a point at positive 4, 4. So there is the new parabola. It's a perfect reflection of the old one over the y-axis. Just going to write that at the bottom. When we replace x with negative x in the function, it reflects f horizontally over the y-axis. Now one for you folks to try. Let f of x equal the square root of under the square root x minus 3. This is a square root function that has an endpoint at 3 comma 0 and another point at 4 comma 1. It's increasing slowly from its endpoint. I want you to find h of x, which is f of negative x. Pause the video and give it a try. And we're back. First, let's go ahead and do the replacement. So we're replacing x in the original function with negative x. That's going to give us the square root of negative x minus 3. So we've replaced the x with negative x. Let's take a look at f of x and h of x. Over here in Desmos, I have f of x graphed. And now I'm going to include the graph of h of x h of x is a perfect reflection over the y-axis of f of x. So any point that we had on the original graph, like the point 3 comma 0, has become exactly the opposite x value, in this case negative 3 comma 0. We can do that with any x value on the original f of x. Let's do that as we sketch. 
So 3 comma 0 becomes negative 3 comma 0. 4 comma 1 becomes negative 4 comma 1. And we can sketch that absolute value graph going in the opposite direction. So the effect of replacing x with negative x reflects f horizontally over the y-axis. It's like a door opening and closing. Just to recap, in this video, we specifically dove into the idea of horizontal transformations besides just going left and right. So we looked at stretches and compressions horizontally and reflections horizontally. The most important thing you can remember about horizontal transformations is that they are a little counterintuitive. And so if there was ever a time to check your work, it is when you are doing horizontal transformations.